So, let's pay attention, please. Here it is. Can this be factored using a binomial squared? First term squared? Hey, that's good. Last term squared? Yeah, 1 times 1 is 1 squared. Is the middle term square, the square root times square root times 2? x times 1 is x times 2 would be 2x. So no, this is not a perfect square trinomial, right? So that means we need to cre cre create a perfect square trinomial. Remember that has a coefficient of 1. That becomes important. So what we're going to do is first thing is going to group the first two terms. And we need to create now a perfect square trinomial. Create a perfect square trinomial. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to take our b, which is 1, divided by 2, and square it. 1 divided by 2 is 1 half squared equals 1 half times 1 half, which is 1 fourth. Ooh, fractions. You knew I was going to get you fractions, but that's OK. We can do this. So we're still going to apply the same thing. x squared plus x plus 1 fourth plus 1 minus 1 fourth. OK, here's where everybody overthinks this. Everybody overthinks this. Here with fractions, is not so bad. But guys, what did I, what did I like guarantee you? When we do completing the square, when we create, by completing the square is creating a perfect square trinomial. Is this factorable? Yes, 100% of the time, every single time, every single thing that you do inside the parentheses. Let's do the first example, x squared plus, I don't want to do that. Let's do the first example we did, x squared minus 6x plus 9. Every single time you create, when you do b divided by 2, you are creating the final number that makes a perfect square trinomial. So every single time it's going to be factorable. Every single time. But again, if I would have asked you at the beginning of the year to factor this, you guys would have been like, I have no idea how to do that. Right, Miss McQu Right? Like, hey, this is way too hard. I, a times C, oh geez, God, adding fractions, nope, too hard. So we know this is a perfect square trinomial. Let's look at the relationships we remember from our warm up. Perfect square trinomials, the first term is the square root of the first term. The second term is the square root of the last term. And the middle term is the same as the middle term. Done. Right? Look at the pattern. That follows every single one of those, the same pattern. Correct? That's why, I wanted, that's why I asked you guys, what are the patterns you guys saw? Because now, if I look at this, if I want to take the square root, if I want to factor this, this actually isn't that bad. Square root of x squared is x, positive, positive. Square root of 1 fourth is 1 half. Done. Now, adding and subtracting fractions. Guys, we can go to a third grade classroom. I guarantee we can get somewhere fractions. But they're probably going to be using like tiles and kind of stuff like that and like taking weeks and weeks learning about fractions. We don't need to do that. We, can we guys agree that 1 is equal to 4 over 4? So why don't we just write 4 over 4 instead of 1? Right? Let's just make life simple. We don't need to go back to third grade and do tiles and candy bars and do all the fraction stuff. Let's just rewrite 1 as 1 over 1. Now we can subtract this. So my final answer, y equals x plus 1 half squared plus 3 fourths. Vertex, negative 1 half, comma, 3 fourths. And that is a absolute um, min. Done. Yes? How did you go from 1 fourth to 1 half? Again, it's in the pattern. Look at the pattern over there. Every single one of those terms is a squared number. So the binomial squared is the square root of that last term. So the square root of 1 fourth is 1 half. Because like, to get to 1 fourth, I squared it. So it's really just right there every time. Yes? Sure. All right, I'm going to give you guys two problems. Um, 